Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. We're continuing our walk through the book of Proverbs. And whether you've been following this or you're jumping in for one video, I'm so glad you're with us. And I'm going to read to you today from Proverbs chapter 5, verses 1 through 6. And the message today is this. Sometimes honey can kill you. Sometimes honey can, sometimes the sweetest things can actually lead to death. And that's what we find in Proverbs chapter 5, beginning in verse 1. My son, pay attention to my wisdom. Turn your ear to my words of insight that you may maintain discretion and your lips may preserve knowledge. For the lips of an adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. She gives no thought to the way of life. Her paths wander aimlessly, but she does not know it. Uh, There's a a big warning here. So just a few thoughts from this theme that sometimes honey can kill you. First, pay attention. This passage begins by a warning. Listen closely. Pay attention. As if if the writer of Proverbs is saying, don't miss this or it could cost you. And so I encourage you to listen closely today to the things I'm going to share. And then also that God's word brings discretion. In, In the passage that we looked at today that we just read, it says that you may maintain discretion, your lips may preserve knowledge. That's verse 2. That, that paying attention to the wisdom of God's word is going to give you knowledge to walk through this life. And then the third simple insight is this. Some things look good, and they may taste good, but at the end, they're deadly. And you, you can think of the, of the you know, candy-coated poisoned apple. You can think of all different images for this. There's things that, that seem wonderful that cost you. But what's the, the point here is that uh, it's focusing on sexual sin and saying, the concept of adultery, being with someone other than your spouse, the enticement that it looks delicious, it looks wonderful, and even at the moment it might even taste wonderful, but at the end it leads to death. And in our culture right now, uh, that is not the message. Uh, the message is as much uh, sexual engagement with as many people in any way you want to, and there's sort of this freedom, uh, began in, in the 50s and 60s, grew through the 70s and 80s, and now it's barely a thing. It's just normative. If you're a person who says, you know, I'm married, I love my spouse, we have total satisfaction in our physical intimacy, and I'm really not interested in anything else. People are going to look at you, what are you talking about? At least you sort of want it, don't you? I mean, at least you sort of dream about it or think about it. But the idea of being satisfied in that marriage relationship with a man and a woman enjoying what God's given them has sort of fallen on hard times in our culture. But the last thing in this passage you see is that there's, there's a reference to the fact that there's a cost if we walk down that road. It says, her feet go down to death, her steps lead straight to the grave. It's this picture of somebody falling into the enticements of sexual sin. And so my encouragement to you is to pay attention. When something, anything looks really sweet and really good and tastes wonderful, just pause and ask, uh, is, is there a bitter side to this? Is there a sharp edge to this where this thing that seems great is going to cost something? Because that's the warning here. And particularly in physical intimacy with other people, our culture says almost anything goes. And God says, I still have a plan. It's a good plan. It's a man, it's a woman in a covenant relationship. And within that context, it's wonderful. And we'll see that more in the upcoming devotions. And so my prayer for you, and I want to pray it right now, is that God would wake you up to the reality that some things that look good can end up costing more than we'd ever imagined or dreamed. Would you pray with me? Living God, you have made us to be people who enjoy the good things you make, but you've always in a loving way given us boundaries. I pray for all of those listening to understand that there's some things that that they may be drawn towards that they should turn away from. And particularly, Lord, in the enticements of our culture to a no boundaries, anything goes sexuality. I pray that we would find meaning and fullness of life in the gift that you've given, in the intimacy of a man and a woman, in the gift of marriage, following you well, and enjoying each other. Lead and guide us into that kind of a pathway, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you're part of Shoreline Church, we have services at 9 and 11, and hopefully we'll see you on campus or online. God bless you. Have a great day.